Hey guys, <laughs> it's me, Lisa ASMR. You can hear the dogs eating in the background. Oh my gosh, I need to take my nails off. This is so horrible. I say nails off, I just need to take the polish off. Um. <sighs> so sorry. I'm just, I'm so tired, and I'm sick, and I've been sick for the past, like, four days, and <laughs> I just want to get better. But this video is not to complain, and it's not to whine. Or is it? Just kidding. Happy Halloween, guys. Write down what you wear below. I know I didn't do a Halloween video this year. I don't want to stuff my face with candy because I'm trying to be healthier and I honestly couldn't come up with a scary idea and I didn't have any scary costumes. If you saw my Instagram, I was a green lemon, so definitely not scary. Um, I'm still in this dang book because literally I don't make myself read anymore, which is really sad because I used to read a book. It wasn't too terribly long. I could read it in a day. This length of a book I'd read in under three days. Harry Potter books I'd finish within a week. And now I'm just like, I've been reading this book for months. It's a good book. Decent book, at least. Oh, my back. Oh my gosh, I feel so good. So, um, I'm just gonna read, oh, okay, so the reason why I left the tips is just because I was, like, thinking of an idea I was gonna make a face, cause it kinda looks like Frankenstein hair, at least in person it does. Oh, hello puppies. I don't feel like you getting on here and leaving all your hair everywhere for me to, yeah. Where are you going to do it anyways? Because you always do. No, no, not on my. Mm. I love them to death, I do. But sometimes it's just like, can you please not? Please. I don't need fur on every single freaking thing I uh have. -huh. No! Stop! Get it! Can't be mad at that face. No, not on that. If you're gonna lay down, you look. Mm -mm. No, come on, off, off. I have some clean clothes over there. I feel like this is a big blooper video. Really, she's on the black clothes. I thought I was gonna need. you to death. I do. I really freaking do. But sometimes I would just love if you just wouldn't. Is that so hard? No. What are you doing? Oh my word. Guys, I just want to cuddle up <laughs> and just curl up a Charmander and have like a hot heating pillow on me and just feel better. I just want to feel better. That's it. That's all. And I just want to be able to make this video because I'm really freaking tired so then I can go to sleep. And now I need to get up and take care of this dog, and I need to get my nail polish off because I forgot. 
Ooh. All right. I'm gonna take you guys with me while I go take a buck. Oh, she's so pretty, but why did she have to do that to me? The struggle is real today, guys. The struggle is real. I couldn't even math today. Like, I'm really good at math. I purposely didn't use calculators in addition and multiplication and division and subtraction just so I could keep my mind fresh and smart, at least as smart as it could be. <laughs> and today I was doing patient numbers for intake. <sighs> oh, you want to come now? Hmm. Well, but. And, um, it was, I went from 1098 to 2000. 1,000, I mean, sorry, 10.99. So 1,099. What comes after 1,099? My brain says 2,000. Go! I see it. Sorry, you're not coming in my room. You have mud footprints and I have white sheets. They'll survive anyways. How do you give like a guy his hat back? Like <laughs> Dreams. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh. Mom doesn't look quite as convinced once the worst is sitting on her kitchen rug for a few moments later. Especially as it's literally sitting on the entire kitchen rug. I told you, it's like dreams, didn't I? Said Elsa cheerfully. Maud nods mutely. Leonard sits on the other side of the table with an immeasurably terrified looking Samantha on his lap. The worst eats dreams a dozen at a time. What breed is that? It's 
this one it very quietly but also as if he's afraid of the worst may take off or take offense a worse this is also with satisfaction when it nods like you do when you don't have a clue what something means Maud opens a new tent of dreams and carefully pushes it across the floor with the tips of her toes. The worst empties it in three slavering bites and lifts its head and peers at Maud with eyes as big as hubcaps. Maud takes down another two tins and tries not to look flattered. It doesn't go so very well. Also looks at the letter from Granny. It's lying unfolded and open on the table. The winner in Maud must have read it while she was in the cellar getting the worst. Leonard notices her looking in, but he puts his hand on her shoulder. You're right, Elsa. Your grandmother says sorry. For what? Maud gives the worst some cinnamon buns and half a length of sweet cake. Well, it was quite a list. Your grandmother was certainly different, Elsa interjects. Maud laughs warmly and pats the worst on the head. Leonard nods at the letter. First of all, she apologizes for telling us so off so often, and for being angry so often, and for arguing and causing problems. It's really nothing to apologize about. All people do that from time to time, he says, as if apologizing for Granny apologizing. You don't, said Elsa, and likes them for it. Maud starts giggling. And then she apologized about that time she happened to shoot Leonard from her balcony with one of those. What are they called? Paint bomb guns. Suddenly she looks embarrassed. Is that what it's called? Paint bomb? Oh shoot, that was my also nods even though it isn't. Um Maud looks proud. Once your grandmother even got Brit Marie. There was a big pink stain on her floral print jacket, and that's Brit Marie's favorite jacket. And that stain won't even go away with Vanish. Can you imagine? Maud titters, and then she looks very guiltily. What else does Granny apologize about? Elsa asks, hoping for some stories about someone shooting the paintball gun at Brit Marie. But Leonard's chin drops towards his chest. He looks at Maud and she nods and Leonard turns to Elsa and says, Your granny wrote that she was sorry for asking us to tell you the whole story, everything you have to know. What story? Elsa asks, about to ask, but she suddenly becomes aware of someone standing behind her. She twists around in her chair and the boy with the syndrome is standing in the bedroom doorway with a cuddly line in his arms. He looks at Elsa, but when she looks back at him, he lets his hair fall over his brow, like Elsa sometimes does. He's about a year younger, but almost exactly as tall, and he has some, the same hairstyle and almost the same color too. The only thing that sets him apart is that Elsa is different and the boy has the syndrome, which is a very special kind of difference. The boy doesn't say anything, because he never does. Maud kisses his forehead and whispers, Nightmare? And the boy nods. Maud gets a big glass of milk and a whole ton of dreams, takes his hand and leads him back into the bedroom, while robustly saying, come on, let's chase it away at once. Then it turns to Elsa. I think your grandmother wanted me to start at the beginning. And that was the day Elsa heard of the story of the boy with this syndrome. A fairy tale she'd never heard before. A tale so terrible it makes you want to hug yourself as hard as you can. Leonard tells her about the boy's father who has more hatred in him than anyone could would be possible to fit into one person. The father used narcotics. Leonard stops himself and seems worried about frightening Elsa, but she straightens her back and buries her hands in the worst's fur and says it doesn't matter. Leonard asks if she knows what narcotics are and she says she read about them on Wikipedia. Mm. Leonard describes how the father became a different creature when he used drugs. How he became a dark in his soul. How he hid the boy's mother while she was pregnant because he didn't want to become anyone's father. Leonard's eyes start blinking more and more slowly. 
And he says that maybe it's because the father feared the child would be as he was. Filled with hatred and violence. So when the boy was born and the doctor said he had a syndrome, the father was beside himself with rage. He couldn't tolerate that the child was different. Maybe it's because he hated everything that was different. Maybe because when he looked at the boy, he saw everything that was different in himself. So he drank alcohol, took more of that stuff on Wikipedia, and disappeared for entire nights and sometimes for weeks on end, without anyone knowing where he was. Sometimes he came home utterly calm and withdrawn. Sometimes he cried, explaining he had to keep out of the way until he'd wrung his own anger out of himself, as if there was something dark living in him that was trying to transform him and he was struggling against it. He could remain calm for weeks after that, or months. Then one night, the dark took possession of him. He hit and hit and hit them until neither of them was moving anymore. And then he ran. Maud's voice moves gently through the silence that Leonard leaves behind him in the kitchen. In the bedroom, the word with the syndrome snores, which is one of the first sounds Elsa hears, has ever heard him make. Maud's fingertips scramble about among the empty cookies hens on the kitchen counter. Um, we found them. We've been trying for such a long time to make her take the boy and leave, but she was so afraid. We were also afraid. He was a terribly dangerous man, she whispers. Elsa grips the wrist tighter. Then what did you do? Maud crumples up by the kitchen table. She has an envelope in her hand, just like the one Elsa arrived with. We knew your grandmother from the hospital. We ran a cafe back then, you see. But the doctors and your grandmother came here, there every day. A dozen dreams and a dozen sunburns. Every single day. I don't know how it started, really, but your grandmother was the sort of person one thing told things to. If you see what I mean, I didn't know what to do about Sam. I didn't know who to turn to. We were so terribly frightened, all of us. But I called her. She arrived in a rusty old car in the middle of the night. Renault, also exclaims, but for some reason she has a sense that he deserves his name in the fairy tale if he's the one who came to the rescue. Leonard clears his throat with a sad smile. Her or not, yes. We took the boy and his mother with us and your grandmother drove here. Gave us the keys to the flats. I can't think how she got her hands on them, but she said that she cleared it with the owners of the building. We've been living here ever since. And the father? What happened when he realized everyone was gone? Elsa wants to know, although she actually doesn't want to know. Leonard's hand seeks Maud's fingers. We don't know, but your grandmother came here with Alf, and so this is Alf, and he's going to fetch all the boys' things. She went back there with Alf, and the boy's father turned up, and he was nothing but darkness then. Darkness from deep inside. He hit Alf something terrible. Leonard stops himself the way one does, and suddenly reminding oneself that one is talking to a child. Fast forwards to the story. Well, of course he was already gone by the time the police came. And Elf, gosh, I don't know. He was patched at the hospital and drove home by himself and never said a word about it again. And two days later, he was driving his cab again. He's made to steal that man. And the father? Elsa persists. He disappeared. Disappeared for years. We thought he'd ne never give up trying to find us, but he was gone for so long that we hoped. Says Leonard, interrupting himself as if the words were too heavy for his tongue. But now he's found us, Maud fills in. How? asks Elsa. Leonard's eyes creep along the tabletop. Alf thinks he's found your grandmother's death notice, you see. And using that, he's found the undertakers. And there he found, he starts to say, then looks as if he's reminding himself of something once again. Me? Elsa gulps. Leonard nods and Maud lets go of his hand and runs around the table and embraces Elsa. Dear, dear Elsa, you have to understand, he hasn't seen the boy in many years, and you're about the same size, and you have the same hair, he thinks you're our grandchild. Elsa closes her eyes, her temples are burning, and for the first time in her life, she uses pure and furious willpower to go to the land of almost awake without even being close to sleeping. 
With all the most powerful force of imagination she can muster, she calls up the cloud animals and flies to Maya Dakas, gathers up all the courage she can carry. Then she pries her eyes open and looks at Leonard and Mon and says, So you're his mother's parents? Leonard's tears fall into the tablecloth like rain against the windowsill. No. We're his father's parents. Elsa squints. You're the father's parents? Mon's chest rises and sinks and she pats the words on the head and goes to fetch a chocolate cake. Samantha looks cautiously at the worse. Leonard goes to get more coffee. His cup trembles so much that it spills on the countertop. I know it sounds terrible, Elsa, taking a child from his father to do that to your own son. But when you become grandparents, then you're grandparents first and foremost, he whispers sadly. You're a grandmother and grandfather above all things. Always, always, Maud adds with unshakable defiance. Her eyes burn in a way that Elsa wouldn't have believed was possible in Maud. Then she gives Elsa the envelope she got from the bedroom. It has Granny's handwriting on it. Elsa doesn't recognize the name, but she understands it's for the boy's mother. She had changed her name when we moved here, Maud explains, and in the softest voice possible adds, Your grandmother left this letter, letter with us months ago. She said you'd come for it. She knew you'd come. One of the dogs is licking the floor outside my bedroom. Weirdo. But I'm afraid that first of all we have to tell you about our son, Elsa. We have to tell you about Sam. And that's one of the things your grandmother apologizes for in her letter. She writes that she's sorry she saved Sam's life. Mom's voice cracks into her words are like little whistles. And then she wrote that she was sorry for writing to say she was sorry about it. Sorry for regretting that she had saved her son's life. Sorry because she no longer knew if he deserved to live, even though she was a doctor. Night comes to the streets outside the window. The kitchen smells of coffee and chocolate cake, and Elsa listens to the story of Sam, the son of the world's kindest couple who became more evil than anyone could understand. He became the father of a boy with the syndrome who in turn had less evil in him than anyone could have believed, as if the father took it all on his shoulders and passed none of it on. She heard the story of how Sam was once a little boy himself and how Maud and Leonard, who had waited for a child so long, had loved him as parents loved their children, as all parents, even the very, very worst possible, must at some point have loved their children. That is how Maud puts it, because otherwise one can't be a human being. I just can't imagine one could be a human otherwise. She whispers, and she insists that it has to be her fault because she can't imagine that any child is born evil. It has to be the mother's fault if a boy who was once so small and helpless grows up into something terrible. She's quite sure that, in spite of Elsa saying that Granny always said some people are actually just shits, and that it's no one's Elsa's fault other than the shits. But Sam was always so angry. I don't know where all that anger came from. There must have been a darkness in me that I passed over to him and I don't know where it came from. Maud whispers quite 